Ask the A-Ball is brought to you by Bebop's, home of the best burger and fries since 1988. Also, by Lola's Fine Hot Sauce, available online at lolasfinehotsauce.com. Hi, I'm Quinn, and I'm listening to my daddy and Cody. <laughs> it's wild like i i like it's just so crazy what she's had to go through not having a phone like and then the other night we were sitting on the couch and i get a text and uh and she's like can you just be in the moment i'm like oh <laughs> oh now now you're in the moment because you don't have your, your phone like like now you're miss in the moment <laughs> i love uh, it i love it she she's the best she's awesome what's the thing dangling off the side of the uh power oh, oh that's power yeah. okay yeah. oh that makes sense it needs power the <laughs> yeah. the go for needs power. Three, two, one. Hey, uh, what's up, Cody? Not much, man. What's up with you? Oh, not a lot. What's uh, what's new? I don't know, man. Let's ask the eight wall. I like I said, I use one of those to record from stage, um, and I get the audience point of view. And then from the back, like from the back of the room, I have a really beefy camera. But it always freaks people out in the front row. Like you can kind of see who has their mistress there and who doesn't. <laughs> when when you put the GoPro on the thing, they're like, "Oh shit, are we gonna be on Instagram together?" And he's like, "Oh." <laughs> it's like the baseball game at the kiss cams. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, It'll sign. Hot. It's my. She's my sister. She's my sister. It's not side bitch Saturday. <laughs> oh man. Ready to go? Yeah. I'm, let's I'm let's do this. <laughs> Perfect. Welcome back, guys. Season four, episode six. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. We lose count. We're not very good with numbers. They're hard. We got a very special guest today. You might have seen him on Jimmy Fallon. Might have seen him on Last Comic Standing. Pete Lee. Oh yeah. yeah. Huh? Yeah, we're coming here from the prestigious balcony. At, can we say tonic? Yeah, oh we're, yeah. we're at tonic. We're overseeing the Smoothie King drive through. <laughs> uh, a lot of smoothies being hurled <laughs> oh, yeah. today in Des Moines. They're, they're trying to live healthy, but even they're like, ah, got to get drunk for the Hawkeye game. Give me a smoothie. It's a halftime <laughs> snack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's the halftime snack. Uh, you, neither of you uh, have a Kia Soul, do you? Cause Why, did you hit that on the way in? No, there, there's a Kia Soul. Not with, the, only, with the black uh, yeah, stripe on it. Yeah, with with a racing stripe, and then on the back window it says Soul. Like, <laughs> I feel like if you own a Kia Soul, like, you're really into vaping. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, I think so. it's more like a hookah thing. Like, let's yeah. do hookah, guys. So, let's do hookah. Because, you know, I... Uh, I do no construction or farming or anything of the sort. I drive a pickup truck because it makes sense. Yeah. And so I had it worked on one time. They gave me a Kia Soul as a rental. Oh, yeah. So to go from that to a Kia Soul, it's a, uh, it was cherry red. <laughs> so it's even so better. You stuck out everywhere you went. Yeah. So 100% I vaped the whole time I was in it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've never vaped since then or before then, but. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. You and got. It was, it was awful. You got to get one of those where you can really make the clouds come out the windows. <laughs> <laughs> you got to look like Snoop Dogg when it's just vacant. Hot box in the soul. Yeah. yeah. Like people are like, is that a, is that a steam, <laughs> steam driven train? Like, <laughs> wow, how is that Kia Soul finding locomotion? I don't know. <laughs> steam powered. Yeah. I mean, if you drive a soul, you should at least put on what it is. The Kia Soul in the back. Yeah. You got to let people know yeah. what you're driving. And yeah. uh, so you're from Wisconsin, correct? From Wisconsin. Yeah. So very, very similar landscape to hear uh a lot of corn yep. a lot of corn and cows a lot of kia souls there's, kia. Um, there's something that people in the, well, i don't know if it's all of iowa but des moines for sure it bugs me on oh, no, a lot of the overpasses on the interstate they hang up r.i.p signs for their friends mm. oh yeah it's do, just do, all they, dead they people Wisconsin? yeah it's just r.i.p cliff <laughs> we were yeah. all right man i was like <laughs> That's the best memorial came up with was you wrote on a bed sheet and hung it from the freeway overpass. I didn't know if that was a Midwest thing or 2000. You probably don't see a lot of that in L.A. 14. No. no you, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, you go. You go. 2014, me and a buddy are going up to the Packer game because we're both Packer fans. Mm-hmm. And the sign says, wear your seatbelt. 218 people died this year. And then, like, on the way back, it says, wear your seatbelt. 219 people died this year. <laughs> like, shit. <laughs> Something bad happened last night. <laughs> You're like, damn, somebody didn't make it home from the Packers game. <laughs> yeah, right. I hope the Packers won if that's how that person died. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, they really invested in that game. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, thank you, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Dead. Dead. These Texans. Dead. Dude, did all Aaron... Hey, but... That's all it says. Yeah. Now they're written in bed sheet across the interstate somewhere, so... <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Right? Yeah, that's always weird when you're driving along and you see the cross uh, on the side of the interstate or like. Oh yeah, look. Uh, yeah. Where the accident happens at mm-hmm. the scene of the crime. Great scene. tweet. <laughs> yeah. Right. 
Yeah. yeah, you're like the the saddest is when you see the big cross with like the little crosses. You know, oh, yeah. And you're like, oh man, that that dad was a, a like bad that must driver. have been a pu- that must <laughs> have been a puppy in the car. Should have worn a seatbelt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why wasn't the puppy seatbelted in? Come on. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was that was bad. Yeah. The um. Yeah, I don't. I never understand how people people memorialize people really in odd ways. You know, like like uh, the in L. A. It's really big where they'll like have it in the back window of a car mm-hmm. like where they do like a whole memorial with like like the uh, it'll be like Jesus or you know like like uh like Saint Mary will be like praying over their friend you know <laughs> yeah. and I yeah. and I'm like I just like nobody's like man I hope I hope I I hope I'm everlasting. I hope my memory lives yeah. forever on the back window of a Nissan Sentra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those Kia souls kill it with that, with that memorialization. Yeah, I'm immortalized <laughs> on the back window with Cody, the tint. You're from small town Iowa. Mm. What did you guys do for a, like a buddy died? Did you put one on a window, on like I mean, a bridge? Where I'm from, only the good die young, so we're all still alive. <laughs> <laughs> nobody's nobody's <laughs> died since 1900. Where are you from? Or, or I'm from a small town called Lehigh, up, Le- by, up by Fort Dodge. Okay. Oh, oh I know that area. Okay. Yeah. I had one of the worst gigs of my life in, <laughs> in Fort Dodge, Iowa. And um, it, it was one of those gigs where, like, like you, I just bombed the whole time. Where were and you then, at? Uh, it was, like, in a barn. I don't know. What, <laughs> Sounds like, what right. Sounds, Sounds accurate. Right. It was, like, in a barn, and then the guy that books the barn, he kept being like, come back. We loved you. And I'm like, nobody loved me. I yeah. don't even know if you were. I'm glad they just released you. Yeah. <laughs> I, that was one of those gigs where, like, you know, you go, do I drive away fast or do I cry in my car? <laughs> you know, like, which you gave one? you a post dated check. Yeah. Wait till Monday to cash this. <laughs> yeah. Dude, how Beans many of those? Beans went down three bucks. You got to wait. <laughs> right. How many of those gigs have we had? Hey, uh, yeah, can you can you wait to cash this till like two weeks? Uh, three weeks actually would be great. Yeah. I got to pay for the liquor order first, so you got to wait. Yeah. And you're well, like, that's, I mean, uh, paying for the liquor order is more than some of them. One of the bartenders or one of the bar owners in town can do. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Somebody told me before, I think it was Rich Voss that told me this, that uh, comedy is the only job where you have to ask for your money. Like, like it's one <laughs> of the only jo- Like, you get done and the whole crowd is like, ah, they're like carrying you off on their shoulders. They want you to sign shit and you're, yeah. you're like selling merch and you're taking pictures. And then you got to walk up to somebody and be like, hey, uh, could, could you please pay me? Uh, <laughs> yeah. You're waiting at the bar. You know, they're like, waiting for something? Yeah, I'm waiting for you to pay me. Like, I, this isn't a hobby, you know? <laughs> yeah. I worked. Like, you see my check? all the exposure you got tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. I'm going to go tell my mortgage company, hey, I'll pay you with exposure, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're good. Right? Yeah. Well, just depending on what kind of exposure you're talking about, like, uh-huh. you know. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, you could you could say something wrong and get canceled now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh my god, that's that's wild. I um uh, I was eating it. I like Jimmy John's. Do you guys like Jimmy John's? I hate Jimmy John's. You hate Jimmy John's. All right, it's freaky slow. It's fr- all right. Today the guy was really slow, and he just showed up. Like I ordered it to my hotel room, which like I applaud anybody that will just walk up to a hotel room yeah, door and just, just like on. have some random person <laughs> yeah, true. answer the door in their boxers, probably. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, but the guy was really slow, and I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna tip him well anyway. It was like thirteen dollars. I tipped him twenty dollars, and this kid looked like he had never gotten money before. <laughs> he was just like, holy shit, man. Yeah, I was like, I mean, I like to get stoned on marijuana, but like I think this kid had either never been tipped before or he was the most stoned. And he <laughs> He was just you, like, I'm so happy I didn't have to do math. Maybe I'm crazy. I feel like most Jimmy John's employees are stoned all the time. Oh, I think it's a requirement. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. I like like you're, you're not working at Jimmy John's straight edge. You yeah, know? right? Yeah. yeah. Like I, during your interview, hey, you need drug tests. I smoke weed. Good. Yeah, <laughs> Good. You, they they drug you, test you to make sure you're doing drugs. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Get all all weed, no Adderall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Our slogan is like everybody's on Adderall because we say that you're freaky for ass. You're freaky for ass. What freaky is frast? happening with my? I, you guys are the first people I've talked to today. By the way, <laughs> it's not uh, that you've had a lot of firsts today. You're, yeah, you, you had an Uber driver that just learned how to drive for the first time. Dude, this guy, he um, like he got so w- I got in the car and he was just doing circles around the parking lot after yeah. I'd had two cancel. And uh, I don't know, like I mean, I know that I know why there there's like an Uber shortage right now is because you know people are deciding whether or not they're going to do unemployment or like drive Uber or wait tables or whatever. Right. I totally empathize with that, but like fuck, I wish people wanted to have jobs right now because like you can't get an Uber. And uh, I'm sitting in the lobby of the Hilton Garden Inn, like all right, the, all right, we got a Rav Four coming, and I can't wait to get in this Rav Four. <laughs> and uh, and then it cancels, and I'm like shit. 
And then it's like we got a Kia Soul coming. Yeah, he wrote about that one. <laughs> Turns out Hang he on. had, I got to cancel. I gotta, he canceled yeah. with the Smoothie King. <laughs> yeah. King first. yeah, he was like, "Fuck, I can make more with Uber Eats if I could just go get the Smoothie King." <laughs> 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 but and then this guy shows up and like he uh, he literally made this noise when he st- he put the car in drive. Like you know, like you you remember the first time you ever drove when you were like click click click. Okay, it's happening. And <laughs> he made this noise. He goes. Ah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I am not confident that I'm going to make it to Tonic at all today. Like he basically just uh, w- wanted to get out of the house for yeah. his wife, so he's like, I'm gonna drive. I've never done it before. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And uh, yeah, the it, vehicle's actually stolen. You just don't know it. Yeah, he he was in a Toyota Camry. So if you're missing a white Toyota Camry, no one pulls over an Uber driver. Uber driver like he's speeding, but he's driving Uber. So let's yeah, listen. as long as yeah. you got that U in the front window. Yeah. Or, yeah. the, or, the, or the pink lift logo. Yeah, the lift. Yep. Just have it like, yeah, if you want a drunk drive, just have your friend sit in the back seat and, get, <laughs> yeah, and, right. and, and go on Amazon and buy a lift sign. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's where you get them, but I don't know where you, uh, I, I, I would assume that company has to anywhere or something. I'm yeah, not sure. go to Kinko's and just have them printed up. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm sure work. you could go on eBay. I'm sure there are a lot of people that drove Lyft and then stopped. Like, it's not like that's a company that nobody retires from. Put <laughs> <laughs> your 401k at Lyft. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, they match nothing. I put in nothing. So I'm driving this till I die. Yeah. They really and now are. there's been 220 traffic deaths this year. <laughs> uh, so are you from? Like a bigger town in Wisconsin or a smaller town? Uh, I'm from like a little big town. Uh, okay. That sounded like a country song name. I'm from Janesville, Wisconsin. It's just south of Madison. We have 63,000 people there. They just updated the sign like a month ago. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Thanks for coming. See you next time. Yeah. Yes. It was like it, all that comes from the 2020 census, but now everything is so slow right. because of COVID. And uh, uh, my mom was like, they just put up the new sign. There's 63,000 people. And I'm like, <laughs> well, you know, it's slow because of COVID and it's COVID. It's probably like 62,000. <laughs> <laughs> is that one of those things where like only uh. like mothers or like your grandparents are like, hey, what's on what's new with you? Well, they just updated, this, updated the sign outside of town. We gained five people last year. Yeah. Oh, my God. We were just waiting to see. Yeah. We were, we were waiting They're to sitting see. There, uh, sitting there reading their coffee at 5 a.m. before they go in. Yeah. Me, uh, my aunt and uncle live in Hastings, Minnesota. It's right on the border of Wisconsin. I know. Hastings, yeah. Uh, and so me and my girlfriend were up there, and we went across the river into Prescott, Wisconsin, the yeah. lunch. And she's, we just started driving around. She's like, what the fuck are we doing? Because we were driving for like 45 minutes, and finally I pulled over on the side of the road, and I saw a bigger house. Because this guy wanted to take a picture of a mansion, or mansion, mansion. somewhere in Wisconsin, <laughs> like the T-Pain song. <laughs> because of that song. <laughs> and I That's just drove around Prescott for an hour trying to find a big house. I was That's like, well. really funny. <laughs> I was like, this the highlight of my week. I just drove around Wisconsin <laughs> trying to find a mansion. It was great. That's there are a lot of weird, big out in the country houses in Wisconsin where you're like, are you? How did you get there? What? How? How did you decide to go in the middle of nowhere and buy a McMansion or just McMansion. build one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I don't understand that like like are you in the witness relocation program yeah and like they paid you a lot of money to flip on that chicago gangster yeah like, what is that I, I i always wonder how they get the names of the towns in wisconsin like they play them boggle and they just shake it up all right that's what our town's gonna be called today yeah we're gonna be sheboygan sheboygan <laughs> those letters kind of go together <laughs> i forgot about sheboygan yeah fond du lac uh mm. what's another uh good one isn't um, there uh one just outside of milwaukee like Minnesaki or something like that. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. There, I'm sure that that's a town name. Like anything that you find that's a town name, like Milwaukee, there'll be like a slight mispronunciation of that, like <laughs> Minnesaki. Like you know how in Nebraska there's a town called Norfolk, but it's really oh, yeah, they yeah. print. They're like we spelled it wrong <laughs> when we did the the town title deed, <laughs> and it's actually Norfolk. Nor- and yeah, Norfolk, and you're like, well, no, it's Norfolk because yeah. you spelled it wrong. Well, and Nebraska, you live in Nebraska, so, so fuck you. Yeah. yeah, Nebraska, you got to factor in the language barrier. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's an awful state. No. Oh. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, based on earlier, you were watching the end of the Minnesota game because you're a Minnesota fan. I'm a Minnesota but you're fan. F- from outside of Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah, I didn't get into Madison. Um, okay. Madison, <laughs> here's, here's the thing, and I'm going to piss people off that are from Wisconsin. Madison is not a good school. Uh, Madison is a shitty Thanks, school. Grandpa graduated from there. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, oh really? <laughs> yeah. Well, my my yeah, mom. My mom graduated from there, <laughs> and she got straight A's because it's a shitty school. <laughs> um, She's actually the no dumbest wonder. person I yeah, know. Yeah. Well, and that's why he went. To, he went from Madison yeah. to Iowa State. Makes sense now. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Madison. 
it was like a subpar middle of the road school. Mm -hmm. And then in 1994, they won the Rose Bowl. Uh, with Barry Alvarez as the head coach, yep. whose son microwaved a live cat. Uh, let's not forget about that <laughs> uh, in his frat house. I did house. not know that. Yeah. Google that um, uh, let's not forget about I that. I got a nominee for Lola Piece of Shit of the Week this week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was like a big news story around Wisconsin that Barry Alvarez's son <laughs> microwaved a live cat. And then it just sort of That's went away because hilarious. they're like, he, w he wins bowl games. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but his son has antisocial personality disorder. Yeah. And um, let's not... Uh, yeah, let's, he won the Rose Bowl, though. Yeah, he won but the Rose Bowl. He always said hi to me. Yeah, that's why he killed six people. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, they uh, they were like a, an all right school, and it really didn't take much to get in there. It was kind of like uh, in my hometown, you'd be like, eh, I want to go to Madison, and then you could just go to Madison. Then they won the 1994 Rose Bowl, and I graduated high school in 1995, and all of a sudden, everybody wanted to go there. It was like the most popular thing. And so I had the grades to go there, and then all of a sudden, I didn't. And I got a letter from Madison. It, I still have the letter in my file. Like I have like a little file cabinet. Um, people like that a, have wronged you over the yeah, years. People, that, people that have wronged me. Like, like, like Steve Buscemi <laughs> and uh, yeah. Happy Gilmore. Yeah. 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 If yeah. they if they make it right, I cross it off in <laughs> lipstick. <laughs> and um, they sent me a letter saying like like hey uh, you know we appreciate your application but based upon your grades and your ACT score because we didn't take SATs we took ACTs uh, and they had a graph they're like see on the chart below where you'll fall in the grade uh, curve here. And I was at like a D minus. So like I'm a, I'm a 17 year old kid and I get this letter from my dream school that says I'm going to fail in life. <laughs> and from that point on, I remember I just like folded it up neatly. I didn't crumple it because crumpling would have been like, ah, I'm done with you. I folded it up neatly and I'm like, I'm going to keep this for the hate. And ever since then, I hate UW Madison. I love the town of Madison. Yeah. I hate the Badgers. Uh, I hate. Uh, yeah. I think that. The, so I mean, so you, it's kind of like every letter Aaron Rodgers' parents have ever written him. Yeah. Right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm like I'm like Tom Brady when he got picked. Like I don't 199? know. One ninety nine. Yeah. One ninety nine. Like I just have that chip on my shoulder. And um, UW Madison, they've asked me to perform there, yeah. and I'm like, no. Seriously? Uh, go yeah. Go fuck yourself. I'm like, wow, go, go. You them that much. Yeah, I'm okay. like, go, go like fuck it. your $5,000, UW Madison. But so I, I got in it, uh, like, like two days later, the University of Minnesota gave me my accept, uh, acceptance letter. So I went there, and uh, I remember, like, yeah, I, like, I just, I got up there, and I was like, yeah, fuck, fuck the Badgers. And um, I, like, it's so weird because. Like, like, you know, Minnesota has a huge rivalry with Iowa. I don't even hate the Hawkeyes. Like, you guys are great this year. I respect it. Uh, even Nebraska. Like, we played them today, and I'm like, ah, I want you to beat Nebraska. Don't really hate them. Just hate the Badgers. I, uh, That's fair. Yeah. I, yeah. Marshall's I petty like that, too. Like, he just mm -hmm. holds a grudge for no reason. Like, oh, hey, yeah, I'm super petty. He's like, you looked me wrong one day. I will kill your firstborn someday yeah well that's not petty that's psychopath i'm more okay. petty all right well yeah like i'll like i'll if it's a girl i'll send them boy clothes <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah i'll do some shit like that yeah yeah, yeah. The, what are they, what's the saying <clears throat> that uh like, hatred or anger is the only thing that poisons its container um, so you shouldn't hold on to hatred because it's actually poisoning you. And I'm like, no, I'm like one of those spies that's gotten used to it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I can carry this anger for UW you Madison. You built up a tolerance. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I, yeah. So when people are like, oh, you're a happy guy. Do you hate anything? I'm like, yeah, Wisconsin Badgers. <laughs> Wisconsin Badgers. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, with that being said, let's roll real quick into our fake sponsor. We'll be right back with more Pete Lee. This next situation could happen to literally anyone. The life of your child is in your hands. It takes only a second to decide whether your child lives or dies. Ho oh, ho! Good job, Slugger. Thanks, Dad. I think I'm gonna head to my room now. All right. Good night. Such a good boy. Son? Son? Jack! Jack! You need to respond instantly in a situation like this. You have just moments before your son reaches climax. Should you cut the belt and taint your son's orgasm, or watch him finish? That's my boy. Dad, no! Great choice. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I finished porn up. Well, we, we actually have this thing where... Um, <laughs> So we've been we've been nonstop traveling together since uh, August thirtieth, mm -hmm. and um, like she 
like she wants to have so much sex and like so do I that like <laughs> I haven't jerked off since October or since August 30th. <laughs> he has a, he has like a notebook. Of- <laughs> yeah, like it just hasn't happened. Like it dawned on me about 2 weeks ago. I was like, "Oh my god, I haven't I haven't jerked off since August 30th. I'm like, that's, I don't, I think since I've been 15 or 16, I haven't gone more than two days without that. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I, haven't like, jerked off like, since, I haven't jerked off since uh, 8.30 this morning. Yeah. I haven't, well, no, right before I came here, <laughs> obviously. Be well, no, I'm, you got to release some, you know. You got to release it. But, like, I'm a big fan of it. And, uh, and like, I also think, like, whenever I, have you ever, like, seen a guy, like, that you, like, cut off in traffic and he's like, and he's like, well, fuck you. I'm like, ah, oh, you just need to find masturbation, man. Yeah, you know? <laughs> clear the pipes. Yeah, you got to clear the pipes, but I that's, haven't. Yeah. That's funny, Zach, because one of my questions for you this week is, what is your go-to porn search? Oh, God. Um, they're back when I masturbated. <laughs> back, Shut, back two months ago. Yeah, back before, <laughs> back before the most satisfying relationship I've ever been in. <laughs> um, I mean, it's really unbelievable. Uh, um, there was this... Uh, this porn that came out called Balesa that uh, it's like it's like porn created by porn people like it's like porn stars create like they create the porn mm, the and porn so that they would want to watch or something. Yeah, the porn that they would want to watch. And it's also porn stars that like choose each other. They're like, oh, I like I really have a crush on this porn star, mm-hmm. you know, like and usually the girls choose. They're like, yeah, that's the guy I want to fuck. And so it's like really hot and <laughs> authentic. God, and, I always um, pick last and everything. I don't want to be. I don't play that game. Be yeah, last. exactly. It's Cody, like I feel like you should go to L.A. and just become a porn star. Yeah, have you seen small Asian penis porn? <laughs> <laughs> you could, you could it makes, be like you, a, makes you feel huge. Yeah. <laughs> you could be like a Chota Boy in Orgasmo. <laughs> yeah. You ever seen that one? Yeah. Stunt cock. And then Cody just comes marching in the room. <laughs> what's up, guys? What's up, guys? What's go- what's going on? <laughs> yeah, but the lesson was like I found that it's like really hot, and you know how you always see these articles that uh, like they're usually a blog by somebody who's like no fun um that like wants to tell you about how bad porn is for porn actors and all that stuff and uh i've met i've actually met a lot of porn uh, actors because in la it's an industry and they need to yeah. go to comedy shows and when you go hey how do you like porn they're like fucking great like they love it and uh, but you always get that blog that comes out where it's like i felt abused the whole time and i'm sure that that's the case sometimes but uh but anyway, this porn apparently is blog proof because it's like the the porn actors choose it and it's like ethical. And uh, and I find that it's like really hot because you can <laughs> tell that the girls really into it. Like the, people always go like, what's your fetish? And I'm like, well, when the girls really into it, that's the, <laughs> like the yeah. that's what I'm into. Mm-hmm. I don't want to I want to like see somebody that looks like like a wife that's been in a marriage for 16 years. <laughs> like, like, okay, I'll take one for the team. Fine. I don't want that. You know, you want, you want a gal that's really into it. Did you, uh, did you, uh, did you ever watch Boy Meets World as a kid? I did. Yeah. Do you remember Rachel? Yeah. Do you know she does porn now? What? Yeah. Okay. Well, so I, was, I, I found myself like, I'm like, I gotta look something. I'm a big Boy Meets World fan. And I look at the first video I find. It's a weird. She's like masturbating on camera, whatever. And people are like, apparently like asking her questions. And she goes, yeah, I don't know why I never gave Mr. Feeney sexual favors. I'm like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> well, I just finished. <laughs> You're like, that's hot. That's hot. Uh, my my girlfriend has a thing where, um, uh, okay, uh, an alert to, uh, okay. Oh, that's so funny. Um, so my girlfriend has this thing where whenever I do a podcast, she texts me tits. Like she knows that my phone will just be sitting here and when it lights up with her name, she knows that I'm going to look at it. So this is one of them. So, uh, and there, it's never like tits with nipples. It's just like cleavage or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's got like really big tits and like, (laughs) I I swear to you, I was, I was interested in her before. Like she, she she cloaked them real well. Like, like, you know how some gals can cloak them real well. And then. I remember the first time we got naked together, I was like, Jesus, like, I liked you anyway. <laughs> I liked you anyway. And then, <laughs> this is and, a bonus. And then you had that. So whatever podcast, she sends me tits with, like, uh, that are, like, of the theme of that podcast. Yeah. And um, so, like, I did a sports one. And so this is my screen background. But I did a sports one. So she sent me, like, a, her tits with, like, a hoodie, you know. Okay. And, uh, and then I did Nigel Barker's uh, drinking podcast, Shaken and Stirred. So she had these two mini wine bottles over oh. her nipples. Okay. And then that was the one. And then I did Adam Carolla's podcast, and he's kind of like a mechanic guy. Mm-hmm. So uh, she just had on like like a flannel, you know, uh, kind of a thing. Uh, but uh, I was like, okay, so what what tits am I getting today? And since she lost her phone, um, she's so afraid that since uh, she like only has her work computer, yeah. that she's like work can literally monitor anything I send. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, th- so she's like, I can't send tits through my work computer. Mm. Uh, so I, I googled I Pete Lee wife. Yeah, just doing some research, and well, that's what popped up. Oh, that's my ex girlfriend. Okay. Yeah, that's a, she's not. She wasn't my wife. Um, it's weird. I was married a long I time ago, but I can't believe the internet gave you false information. It, I've yeah. never known the internet to be wrong. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I it it's um. The weirdest part is, uh, yeah, so, like, I was married, and uh, I, in my divorce, I signed a non-disparagement clause, so I can't say anything uh, negative about her. Uh, only positive things to say <laughs> about that one. But, <laughs> about, um, that, about that marriage that failed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, you know, it is what it is. Most marriages fail, and, uh, but, but the, um, so I dated that gal who you pulled up, um, and, uh, you know, it was, it was one of those things where it was, it was COVID, you mm-hmm. know, and, uh, we lived together during a, a global pandemic and it turns out I'm a lot. And, uh, <laughs> um, I would say that's why that one ended, but it's so funny cause, um, like now that I've gotten Is a little more new one then. Oh no, that's a, that's a, she's a comic that guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're um, just trying to get him in trouble? No, no, no. <laughs> no, the um uh I, I can show you the the face of uh of Nicole. Um the the face of Nicole. The face of Nicole. <laughs> Tony's like she even has a face. <laughs> yeah. That, that sounded like like an all girl band. The, <laughs> the face, face of, of Nicole. Nicole. Um <laughs> opening for Gore. Yeah. Um but the there Gore. <laughs> Gore. Gore. Gore is awesome. Uh so this is uh that's Nicole. That's oh, her. Very cute. Yeah, she's a, she's okay. a cutie. Um, so you like lied to her a lot? Is that how you convinced her to date you? Or dude, <laughs> I kidding. can't even believe that I got her to date me. She's <laughs> she's unbelievable. She's so cool, so amazing. Um, yeah, I, like she's way better than me, and like I I lucked out basically. And I think that like the only way that I got her to date me is like most guys are pieces of shit, and like uh, she just I think she just got to a point in her life where she realized that, and then she was like, I'll I'll take a good guy, you yeah. know, like I'll take a Pete. But, um, I'll take a Pete. <laughs> I'll take a like, Pete. You know guys named Pete? <laughs> yeah. oh, like, generally just good guys. I yeah. mean, I, honestly, I can't think of any Pete's I don't like. Yeah, Pete's are, Pete's are good guys. Do you remember the adventures of Pete and Pete? I was just about to say, I, was like, I grew <laughs> yeah. up watching Pete and Pete, so yeah. maybe that's why. Maybe but. that's it. We're just good guys. But now that... Uh, so I've been getting a little bit more PR now that my special is out on Showtime, Tall, Dark, and Pleasant. Please watch it. Um, but uh, now what's there it, are these. What's it on? Showtime. Uh, Showtime. Okay. It's on Showtime anytime, Showtime on demand, uh, any of the Showtimes. Yep. But now there's... Uh, like I've never had this in my life where I'm dating, I'm dating Nicole. We're a new couple and uh, I've been posting about her on my Instagram and like pretty open about, you know, whatever. And now there's these articles. If you Google, it'll be like, who is Pete Lee's new mystery girlfriend? <laughs> and I'm like mystery girlfriend. And the weird part is like, they'll name her and they'll name her birthday and like where she works and all this shit. And Jesus. I'm like, that is like, I think that's, Technically, stalking. Yeah, that's a, like because she's a private <clears throat> citizen, so I don't think you're allowed to do that. Like I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think. Have yeah. you ever had a run in, run in with like the paparazzi or anything? Um, in LA, every once in a while, like I've been hanging out with like famous friends, and then like TMZ is there, or like yeah. uh, whatever, and it's never one of those. It's never like a Brad Pitt, Jennifer Aniston situation. Yeah. Like they'll take your picture, and then you, I'll have to go search for it on the Getty Images site. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so this is me outside of Nobu uh, <laughs> with my Just famous in the, friend. in the background. Yeah. yeah. It's so funny when a, when a paparazzi will, like, they'll take a picture of your famous friend and then you'll just be kind of, like, checking a text and then they'll be like, do you want a picture? And I'll be like, yeah. And then they'll take my picture and they'll go, who are you? And I'll be like, I'm Pete. I'm a comedian. You know, Is a paparazzi just, like, any fans out there taking pictures or is it, like... Well, I mean, they work for... Yeah, kind of, but they sell their photos off to publications like... So like Spider-Man, Peter Parker is a paparazzi. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. Yeah, they're, like, it, it's really weird. Like, you'll land at LAX and sometimes they'll be at the airport, but, like, the only way that they could know that is if they got a tip, yeah. you know, and a lot of times, like, it's the person's publicist mm-hmm. that tips them off that they're at really? the airport. So it's, like, it's kind of one of those, like, it, like even bad news is good publicity kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah. So it'll be, like, Lizzo is traveling through the airport. Can you believe these sweatpants? <laughs> And like, meanwhile, <laughs> you know, she probably texted her publicist like, "These are fucking ridiculous sweatpants. Have them take a picture of it." And then it's a story. Yeah. It's like it gets the name out. Yeah, it gets the name out. If you're if you're in the news, you're in the news. You know. That's true. Um, uh, Cody. Yes, sir. Should we kick into the blitz? Yeah. Hot, hot, hike. It's, it's a blitz. It's, it's a blitz. It's, it's a blitz. Yeah, it's a blitz. Let's go. So Pete, we always do a section called the blitz it's 
back and forth. So I'll, I got seven questions. I'm going to ask you seven, and mm. then I'll ask Marshall seven, and then we'll uh, compare answers. I love it. Perfect. Rapid fire. Uh, first question. Trade places with any celebrity alive, who would it be? Oh, God. Trade places with any celebrity alive. Um, God, I'm 44, and I kind of want more life. So I think I, I would trade places with, like, a young celebrity. Okay. Uh, like, I don't necessarily like this guy, but Tim, is, Tim you know that Timothy Chalamet kid? Oh, yeah. Kid? yeah. Mm-hmm. He's, like, young. and sure. er, like, like Young and yeah, he was at SNL one time. He's, yeah, I don't remember what movie he was in. That was a big movie, but okay. Yeah, he's he's pretty well known. Yeah, okay. I think I would I'd trade it with him because he seems to have a pretty awesome life, and then like I could get more life. You know? Okay, so like, I, like unlike most comedians, you're not like severely depressed and all that. Yeah, well, I'm on Zoloft, so <laughs> I, I want to be Timothy Chalamet, and then I I want to be. Uh, on Zoloft still. Okay. That's, That's what, what I happens want. You don't jerk off for a month and a half. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Question yeah. two. Is stripping a skill or a talent? Oh, God. I, I don't even know it's what the definition question. of a skill or a talent is. <laughs> I don't either, but that's um, what I asked. That's a good question. I think it's a skill because I'm sure that there are a lot of gals that go in. T- oh, and guys. Guys can be strippers, too. I mean, I get naked every day. And yeah. I don't, you don't make any money. I don't make any money. <laughs> I feel like... It's a good time to promote your OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> naked every day. <laughs> I, I'm at Naked Every Day <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> on OnlyFans. Um, I, think it's a, I think it's a skill because I'm pretty sure there are just like a lot of hot people that walk into stripping and they just don't even know how to do that or they don't know any movement and they kind of learn it over time. Okay. I bet it's one of those things. That, you know, I'm sure that there are gals that are just super talented at it yeah. like moving or, or maybe they're dancers beforehand, but yeah, I think, I think there are probably a lot of clunky hot girls that go in there. Okay. All right. No question. Number three, stupidest bet you've ever made. Stupidest bet that I've ever made. Oh my God. So when I was a little kid in my neighborhood, um, I was like, like I, like I have anxiety and stuff like that. So like, I feel like I'm emotionally fragile, but physically, like I don't care about physical pain or like, or anything like that. I was a skateboarder growing up and okay. I was in the martial arts. So like you can kick me in the face and I'd be fine. But if you're like, dude, your hair's weird. I'd be like, <laughs> ouch, <laughs> you know, ouch. cuts deep. Ouch. Yeah. That, it cuts deep. That hurts. So the kids in my neighborhood, they all knew this. And, uh, so they would be like, Pete, like every Friday night, this was like the highlight of the Friday night. <laughs> They'd be like, they'd so be going like, to Blockbuster just to make fun of Pete. Dude, it was seriously like it was one of those things. And we'd go up to we'd go up to the park in my neighborhood, and uh, one of the older kids would uh, get like a or one of the kids would get like a can of chew that his older brother bought. <laughs> and for five dollars, if I could hold the can of chew in my mouth for five minutes, and this isn't five digital minutes, like precise. This is a kid holding a watch. Like and really up to his discretion. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah it, no, it, it might like have been four. it might have been six or seven, mm-hmm. and he's going, "Nope, getting closer." And if I could hold it in my mouth uh, for five minutes, I'd get the five dollars. And uh, every single Friday night, for like forever, I would hold it in my mouth. And then I would usually every single Friday night I would I would like barf really badly right at like minute four because I just couldn't hold it because a whole can of chew in your mouth. It's kind of like a cinnamon challenge, except for you're like waterboarding yourself with your own spit. <laughs> so, like, or you know when they put fluoride in your mouth at the dentist and it drips down. So I'd have to wear like a shirt that I didn't care about it dripping down on, or just wear no shirt like an animal, and then I would end up just barfing all over the place. So I started training. Uh, so I, you know, how they had those logs of skull where it was like a whole log. Oh, yeah. I started training where I had my older brother, Will go get me a log, of skull. And I started training so that I could win on Friday nights. <laughs> and then I, then I really started collecting the, the, the money. Oh, candy bar. <laughs> bitch. That's, yeah. that's, amazing. So that's a really, that's a, probably one of the dumbest bets that I've ever seen. That's awesome. Did you win the five bucks though? Eventually? Oh yeah. I started. Well, but here's the problem is the log of skull. I forget how much that cost, but I think it was like thirty dollars of my allowance money. Oh, so and I don't even think that I recouped that. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, did you? Because once I started winning, the kids were like, "Well, we don't want to do this anymore." <laughs> I think I got you like twenty five, like five more bucks. Twenty five in the hole. Oh, that's <clears throat> hilarious. Um, question four: What's one thing all Wisconsin people do? 
gain weight. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Have you guys seen that Onion article? Uh, Aaron Rodgers, it was when he got injured last season or the season before that. Uh, it, he had been inactive for eight days, and it said Aaron Rodgers balloons up to a whopping 380 pounds <laughs> after eight days of inactivity in Wisconsin. <laughs> that is, that's funny, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, question five Describe yourself in one word. I don't think this really describes me, but I just, it's the word, I just wanted to go, tenacity. Tenacity. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fun. I'm going to start working Tenac- that word in my vocabulary. Tenacity. Right? tenacity. I got to look it up first, but then I'm going to look up word in my vocabulary. Matter. I just use it in any sentence. Yeah. Right? Tenacity. Hey, you guys have any of that tenacity behind the bar tonight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know who used to not be a good stripper, and then she really learned? <laughs> tenacity. tenacity. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, that's a funny. good skill for her. <laughs> yeah, tenacity. Finish this sentence. Dogs with people names are uh, funny. I I think that's funny. Like my uh, uh, so I don't. I actually don't know what the name is. Um, so uh, I used to have a niece, Liz, and now she's Eli. Who or now they are Eli. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm starting to get this correct. So I don't know what I call this person in terms of like my family tree, <laughs> but, um, uh, mm. Eli has a dog named Bruce. And I think, um, I think that that's hilarious. <laughs> I think Bruce is a dog name is so fucking funny just to be like, Bruce, like, like you're standing outside What's of their Bruce? house going, Bruce, come back, Bruce, 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 come back, Bruce, come back. Yeah. Like old, it's an old yellers. Come back, Bruce. Yeah. It sounds like you're like, uh, yeah, it really sounds like you're it's like why your dad left. Come back, Bruce. Yeah. yeah. To be fair, shouldn't the dog's name change from Bruce to Caitlin? I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that, would yeah. that be the logical yeah, next step? Right? I think so. That's, that's funny. That's <laughs> funny there. Which, by the way, Caitlin Jenner um, <laughs> is the only... I think is the only member of that community that I've ever not liked, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. like there's so much debate uh, of people or whatever, where they're like, they're like, oh, I don't really like that movement or whatever. And I'm like, well, I think the only person in that community that I don't like is Caitlyn Jenner because I've met Caitlyn Jenner a couple times and uh, Caitlyn oh. Jenner is a huge lumbering sour sack of soul <laughs> like um just not like not a happy person like pretty uh has like basically barked at me to get out of the way and i'm like okay how are you the person of the year right so uh if you're in that movement i support you 100 percent. i don't think the movement supports caitlin yeah, i don't, I don't know. think so yeah because caitlin i think caitlin uh, yeah but i think caitlin has a lot of beliefs that they don't believe in yeah. as well so yeah all right question seven what is your favorite type of artificial women? Wait, favorite type of artificial women? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> artificial women. Um, I'm not sure how to take that. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to figure out what an artificial woman is. Um, well, because I, like, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, um, I, I think it'd be easy to say, like, anime or whatever, but, like, I'm, like, I, I know guys that look at anime and they're like, oh, man, that chick's really hot. Like, I'm into anime. And I'm like, mm, it doesn't do it for me. Yeah. Um, artificial women. I don't even like women with a lot of plastic surgery, so I don't <laughs> even know um, how that is. I dated a gal that got, uh, she got plastic surgery, and then right a- after that, I didn't really feel attracted to her because, like, it was a different face. It's like my <laughs> facial recognition was like, <laughs> yeah, I've never. didn't work. Yeah, I've never dated her. Yeah, you know, um, but uh, artificial woman. Oh God, uh, Siri. How about Siri? Okay. I think S- Siri is okay. very helpful. Right. I don't know that I'm attracted to her, but Siri. Um, I find like I'm very respectful of women, but I found that I'm kind of abusive to Siri. <laughs> yeah, like I'm not fair. really abusive to anybody, but like if if I'm like Siri, I need please do Google directions to the Funny Bone in Des Moines, yeah. and then she's like googling to pizza hut i'm like you fucking bitch <laughs> like you dumb bitch siri <laughs> like but then you end with, with all due respect right like with yeah. all due respect siri <laughs> yeah with all due respect but i think siri is the only is the only woman i've ever been abusive to because she's a dumb <laughs> bitch <laughs> you got that midwest nice What's in it? you right my series yeah. i think i made my siri a british male oh oh yeah you can do that yeah so then you don't feel as bad about it yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah but right. i i think i'd be like is he a, is it a Siri? I guess it can it's be. It's still Siri, yeah. 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 Siri relates to both. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. they. Um, that's from the woods. Marshall, mm-hmm. you ready? Yep. I'm ready. All right. Question one. Trade places with any celebrity. Who would it be? Kanye West. 
oh, idiot. That's a good no, one. No, that guy has a crazy Question life. Why two, would you want to be a part of that? Is stripping a skill or a talent? Uh, it's probably a talent. Okay. Because I feel like uh, you can... Yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to go talent because I think he said skill. Okay. Yeah. Could you yeah, try to win this one, Let's huh? go do opposite. Yeah. Question three. What's the stupidest bet you've ever made? Ooh, that's a good one. So me and uh, our buddy Tobis, we made a bet before the football season like eight years ago. He's a Cardinals fan. I'm a Cowboys fan. Yeah. Whoever's team had the worst record had to shit their pants <laughs> in, the, in front of all of our friends. <laughs> Did either one of you ever do that? Both teams finished 8-8. Eight and eight. <laughs> Came down to the very last week. That's Both hilarious. teams finished 8-8. Eight eight. Neither one of us had to shit our pants, but we were sweating hard. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Yeah. Eight, not like ready to eat that Taco Bell? Yeah. Question four. What's one thing all Iowa people do? Uh, drive terribly. <laughs> Iowa people are so bad at driving. Okay. I feel like L.A. is worse, but I'm not sure. I've never been, I guess. There's a lot more traffic in L.A. Yeah. But L.A. I don't know. Question five. Describe yourself in one word. Handsome. Yeah. Handsome as shit. Does that work? That's three words, but whatever. I have to say it real fast. I'll, I'll use shit as your, as your <laughs> go-to. Perfect. Still a word. Question six. Finish the sentence. Dogs with people names are? Uh, not as cool as people with dog names. Oh, <laughs> I like that. That was really oh, great. That was a good one. This Question like, seven. What's your favorite type of artificial women? I mean... Siri is probably the best answer, so I guess the only alternative, I'm going to say this just because you're an Android guy, I'd probably go with Alexa. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, trade place with any celebrity. You said Kanye, Kanye West. West. He's yeah. a terrible human being, so you lose automatically. Wow. Yeah. Just Kanye just sucks. So, Pete wins that point. I didn't know that we were winning or losing. Oh, yeah. That's All competition. Right. Oh, wow. All it's right. competition. Uh, Cody, Question wasn't Kanye two. in your top five favorite rappers? He's a great lyricist. It's a okay. terrible person. Okay. I would not want to trade his life. I just want to check. I was curious. Uh, question two, stripping a skill or a talent. It is definitely a talent. 1-1. One, one. Ah, 1-1. One, one. I got a point. The score is 1-1. <laughs> one <to> one. <laughs> stupidest bet you ever made, Pete. That's the stupidest bet I've ever heard in my life. I love it. That's so that funny. That was pretty good. That's so funny. So I win for you, losing you on that win. one. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact that you didn't make your money back is even better. Like, All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's hilarious. What's one thing all Wisconsin Iowa people do? Um, drive bad. I don't think we're that bad at drivers. Oh, Iowa like, people are terrible drivers. Uh, Everyone drives slow in the left lane. Everyone goes mm. the same speed. People are just fair. What did you say again? I said gain, gain weight. weight. Yeah. His is a like a proven fact. No matter what, you're not gonna lose have, weight. Have both. you drove here? Well, yeah. you're probably one of the bad drivers. I'm that a makes great sense. driver. So you pizza up three one. Describe yourself in one word. Tenacity is. That's a great. I mean, <laughs> that's you, a great you can't argue with that one. And handsome's a lie. So, <laughs> I think you're pretty handsome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Finish the sentence. Dogs with people names are actually that one's pretty funny. People with are, aren't as funny. Are as funny people with mm-hmm. dog names? Yeah, that's that was a good one. Three great. two. Th- yeah, this is my friend Rover. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then what's your favorite type of artificial woman? The correct answer is inflatable doll. Clearly, but. <laughs> <laughs> for who? <laughs> well, I mean, your girlfriend's real. Your girlfriend's real. Mine only deflates when I use her. So. <laughs> Pete's also, the only woman Cody's ever talked down to. <laughs> yeah. Well, because she's like one the of those pumps clowns. Broke. When you remember those clowns that were clipped, you blow up, you punch them, and they pump back up. <laughs> you. Like you weren't good enough. All right, oh, I suck. <laughs> so I lose. So Pete, you win the blitz. All, All right, right, I won the blitz. <laughs> the, the, the the blitz. Uh, let's I, I, let's talk about our sponsors real quick. Yeah. For a commercial. So, Pete, uh, have you you said you hadn't uh, tried Bebop's, huh? I haven't tried Bebop. So, is Bebop's a real sponsor? Yeah. Or, yeah. So, it is a real sponsor. By the way, my girlfriend did send tits, but I, like she sent like like real like all the whole tits, <laughs> and I was like, "You've never sent one with nipples before." I was like, "I don't know." I think she had some drinks at lunch. <laughs> Thinks she was excited about Bebop's. Well, yeah, she must have heard. She must, she, so she's watched the podcast. She knows all. She's watched the podcast. <laughs> she's like, "I want to show these guys my reaction." Yeah, tits. but part of the part of it is if she sends tits, <laughs> we have to um, we have to craft. A response back to her. Okay, that's that's one part of the rule of this game. Just one testicle from just, each of us. <laughs> just one testicle. Well, it's it can't be a picture. It's got to be um, like some sort of witty response. Okay. Um, so uh, I don't know why she sent. She knows we're in Iowa. She knows it's like an Iowa podcast, and then she's just sent just bare tits. Um, she looks like she's eating plenty of corn. Oh, all right. 
She's eating plenty of corn. She's got, nice. her, she's got her corn intake. Those are some corn fed tits. Corn fed tits. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some corn fed tits. <laughs> That's pretty good. Those are great. All right. Okay. So, Bebop's local establishment. Yeah. Best, voted best burger in town or like in, in Iowa 20 something, 30 years ago. 20 in a row. years ago. Best in a row. burger, best fries. Their closest burger. location is actually just over there. Right, right next like, to your hotel. Yeah. You should check it out while you're in town. Yep. Uh, check out the chicken sandwich as well. Bebop's actually has a new menu item coming out. Yeah. They won't tell us what yet. I still think it's a like a spicy or a buffalo chicken sandwich, but it, that'd be a good guess. But uh, Lent's coming up, isn't yeah? it? So is maybe it? it's a, I don't know. Have you ch- Pete? Have you tried Lola's? No, local hot sauce local company. Hot they're sauce. now national. They're, oh, nas- they're actually in four countries. So yeah, they're in. They're, and you can buy Canada? them at any Lowe's store in the country. Yeah. Oh, really? You can, like wait the. Like the hardware store? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're sold in Lowe's. Wow. So we, that's got to be some kick ass hot sauce if it's sold at a Lowe's. Yeah. yeah. So we did so the Howling Challenge just, last week and just they all have fantastic one. flavor. This one is insanely hot though. The Family Reserve. Oh, dear. Yeah, so I, if you like hot sauce, this is. If you want to do a shot of it later, fantastic. dude, it'll help you lose weight. I promise. I could not handle that at all. Like, I, I'm i not somebody that, that hates spicy stuff, but you know that, like, like crazy hot sauce or like the ghost pepper hot yeah. sauce that haunts me for days. Yeah, like, they have like, a ghost pepper one too. Yeah. It's not like one of those things where people are like, Oh man, the next morning <laughs> I took a shit and my, my asshole was on fire. It's like, for me, it's like three days. It's like, it stays. <laughs> it's almost like sprouts. How if you keep them in your fridge, there's more sprouts. Yeah. yeah. That's what hot sauce does in my system. <laughs> okay. So, so I would actually create more Lola's in my system. Do you like like Buffalo sauce? I, I do like Buffalo. They do a Buffalo. They got their Buffalo. Yeah. Yep. Which oh, they also do, fantastic. They also do salsa, Bloody Mary mix, margarita mix. And if you live in California, you want it delivered, you can go to Lola's Fine Hot Sauce dot com. Promo code Ask the Eight Ball. You get ten percent off your order. I yeah. like that. Perfect. Uh, here's a quick word from more of our sponsors, and we will be right back. Where's the best place in Des Moines to get a burger, fries, and a chocolate shake? Viva! Big tasty burgers, hot crispy fries, and great chocolate shakes. So why do you come to Bebop's? The burgers are fresh and fast, and it tastes great. I like the pork fritters and chicken sandwiches. Where's the best place in the morning to get a burger, fries, and a chocolate shake? There's only one place we go. Bebop's. Bebop's. Better than good. Lola's Fine Hot Sauce. A generational family recipe using the world's hottest peppers for great flavor. They're vegan, non-GMO project verified, kosher, and all natural. Find them online at lolasfinehotsauce.com. Use promo code ASK8BALL for 10% off your purchase. February of 2020 or whatever, we go to the local comedy club and I do open mic and my hands are going like this. Oh, yeah. And I get up there and I tell like two jokes. And I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm like hammered because I'm just nervous. <laughs> and I tell like two, three jokes, almost like a minute and a half. And I just, all right, that's all I got, guys. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. I've done two shows, and I just started writing about a couple weeks ago again. I took like three okay. months off from writing, but I've got two new jokes I think are I am very excited. Can't do Thursday, but the Thursday after that, I'm gonna I'm very excited to try out. Oh, so. you can try them out right now. Do you want to try them out right now on right the podcast? Now? Yeah. You got a professional here. Yeah. yeah let's pizza do it. too. I can help. <laughs> I can, yeah. Yeah. I can help joke doctor. <laughs> um. So I, so I tell the one De- I told before. Deliver it like like where the audience right, still. Right. Yeah. So, on uh, America's weird. Like you celebrate weird holidays, you do weird things for on holidays. St. Patty's Day, you drink Irish beer and Irish whiskey. On uh, Cinco de Mayo, you drink tequila. On uh, 420, you smoke weed, right? Yeah. On uh, 911, do you skydive? <laughs> too soon, man. Too soon. It's been 20 years. Too soon, man. <laughs> 20 years. Too soon. <laughs> It's not a bad joke. I don't know uh, who told me that one. That's a, that's a good joke. We also got that one. I think strip clubs should have punch cards. Or like like they sell you a credit card. So you like, oh, 10% off any sex toys you buy. Or lingerie. Or <laughs> butt plugs. Like, why butt plugs? You ever seen a stripper on stage with a butt plug? That's That deserves a reward. Just to be able to do that. That's really funny that you would get rewards towards like like really fun things. Like, it's always <laughs> yeah. like you had lunch there ten times, and <laughs> yeah. next next titty in your face is you free. Get, yeah. yeah, you got the over the pants hand job seven times, two more, and you get a free one. Yeah, <laughs> like, we're not gonna touch you. We're wearing our glove, but 
That's so funny. I'm working towards a flashlight. Like you're, <laughs> <laughs> you get, you get like yeah. rewards. Trying to get my, my bonus points yeah. off so yeah. I can buy a new. Right now yeah. I'm only on the butt flashlight. Ten yeah. more points, I get the front. <laughs> I've got so much duct tape on my girlfriend that's inflatable that <laughs> I got to get a new one soon. So, C- Cody, you seem like a flashlight kind of guy. Uh, have you ever have you ever thought of, should I get you one for Christmas as a gift? Yeah. Would that be weird if like your like best friend buys you a flashlight for Christmas or no, like a that's birthday? A, that's a good friend. Yeah. That I I don't know. I mean. Yeah, I guess, yeah, we, would would you just forever be thinking about him? Yeah, like, like, <laughs> yeah, like every time you're like, all right, got the mood going. Just, yeah. I wonder what Eric's doing today. Just finish yeah. and then like, send, him a, send him a picture. Thanks, dude. Yeah. yeah. Feeling as, you're, as you're washing the inside of it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Putting it in That's, the dishwasher. See, the issue is it takes so much time afterwards to wash it out and clean it up. Like You don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> you just... You could just leave it crusty. I <laughs> crusty. I already have to clean my CPAP machine, and I, I don't want another. I don't want another device like that. You know that I gotta I gotta rinse out and so. uh, Big thanks to Bebops and Lola's, and, and also thanks tonic to Tonic Westman West for letting us uh, take over their upstairs patio, home of the Cody King. Yeah, yeah. Come check him out uh, once Saturday a month nights. when he works. Yeah. yeah, I don't. Can I tell you a story about this balcony? A long time ago, I was here. Um, it was, this was like years and years ago, and there was some opening act from Cleveland. I don't even remember his name. And uh, I remember Alicia was like, hey, we got this kid coming in, and Stroop's taking a chance on him. And he was just like, like I'm actually a big fan of having dirty comics open for me, even though I'm a cleaner comic, because yeah. like, I just like it to... Yeah. But this comic was just like like the filthiest... Like, like people, people who were like cool were like, oh my. You know, oh like, my. Like, this <laughs> is... This is way too much. Yeah. And uh, it's like way too much for a date night. Like obviously not a a professional comedian. Anyway, uh, after the show, he's like, man, how fucking shitty were those crowds? I was like, oh, uh, yeah, they're bad. And (laughs) they were great crowds. And um, (laughs) and, uh, he, he was like, he's like, well, let's go over to Tonic and um, and hang out. And I was not single at the time. So like. Um, he finds like the skankiest girl in the world and he's like She's talking to her. Here Wel- welcome to Tonic. <laughs> welcome, yeah, to welcome to Tonic. To tonic. <laughs> and, um, and this guy just goes to the, he like, he's like, I got to go to the bathroom. And I didn't realize he was like taking a shit, but like, he's like in Tonic taking a shit. Oh. Which if you've been to the bathroom, you're not a nope. yeah. Sorry. Love this bar. Love. Yeah. 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 So not like, take a shit here. go next door to Betty's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'll go across the street to the, where the bonefish wants you to eat. Yeah. I, I, but so like, I'm talking to this, this skank. Like the really skanky girl for way pretty too name. long. Her name was Tracy. She's very pretty, but she was yeah. skanky. She, just you know when you see a girl and you're just like she's filled with bacteria. You know, like <laughs> like, like this was pre-pandemic, and I wish I had a mask. She, you know? she, was, like, she, was, she was patient zero. Yeah, she was patient zero. Just like like uh, like real gross person, and. This guy was like, like, um, so we had gotten each other's numbers because he had driven me to the club. And so he's like texting me from the bathroom and he's like, he's like, Hey man, he's like, he's like, keep, you know, don't let her leave. You know, like I'll be right back. So I'm talking to her and uh, I'm like hanging out on that railing, kind of like right there, like just kind of talking to her normal stance, not in like I'm hitting on you stance, whatever. This dude comes out the door and he's like, and he comes up to me. He's like, are you hitting on my girl? And I was like, wait, what? I was like, you just texted me, like, make sure she stays here and whatever. And I was like, I'm not. I was like, was I hitting on you? She's like, no way. And then he, like, blows up at me. And it was, like, right there. He blows up at me. And he's like, fuck you. You're finding your own ride home. And then he left. And uh, this was back when the comics stayed at that Days Inn over by the Arby's. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, it was, it was like, like a $40 Uber ride home. Or I don't even. Yeah, I think it was, like, a, I had to take an Uber. And it was, like. It was just so expensive, and I remember I just hated this guy for the rest of the week. And um, he's one of the only comics that I would go up on stage <laughs> afterwards and just be like, "Hey guys, uh, please don't leave. He was really bad. Uh, Did, like, please stay." You said that's yeah. I would, like, wow, I, that is so disrespectful to say about another comic. Yeah. But, like after he left me at the bar after I was trying to help him out with the skank. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. I don't, somebody told me later on that that uh, that he suffered from bipolar disorder, but like. So you, yeah. you, he opened for you a couple times after that night. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. I, I really brought him on the road with me. But people, somebody who was like, oh, yeah, he's bipolar. That's why he was acting like that. And I'm like, that's not how bipolar disorder works. Like, you don't change. Like, the wind doesn't just shift and then you're, like, mean. Yeah. You're, like, all of a sudden. Like, it's, like, usually a gradual shift over time. Right. I was like, I think he's that's just. That's how alcohol works. Yeah, <laughs> it is how alcohol works. It is how drugs work. I yeah. think he went to the bathroom to do drugs and then he was like, oh, I got to shit. He, he did the, the cocaine? 
You, I, you, you watch, probably uh, did, yeah. You ever watch Curb Your Enthusiasm? Oh, I love it. It's yeah. like the Larry David episode where he's, I mean, he's just an asshole in the show, but he just starts telling everyone he had Asperger's. <laughs> <laughs> like, Larry, you're an asshole. He's like, I got Asperger's. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Pete. Oh, go ahead. No, I was saying it's still the same concept. <laughs> yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. So you've had, you've had kind of quite a career. You were uh, you were the first person to ever get a standing ovation on the Jimmy Fallon show. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Did you do the cocaine joke? The cocaine? No, I, did, <laughs> I didn't do the cocaine joke. Um, that, I actually, I opened my special with the cocaine joke because... Uh, like you know, there's so many bits that you can't really do on Fallon because you, you got to be pretty be clean, PG you know. Yeah. Whatever. You can't you can't go on Fallon and be like, I'm going to talk about cocaine, you know. Um, uh, the but the um, yeah the the standing ovation story. Um, I'll tell you the whole story. It, so uh, my career was kind of down in the dumps. Like nobody wanted to book me on TV stuff, and you know I was like just kind of out on the road, you know, making fifteen bucks, uh, fifteen hundred a week, you know, like kind of like whatever the minimum headliner pay is i was like right right there uh spending more money on travel than i was you know uh on making like making it gigs a lot of times and I, like my career was just kind of down in the dumps and i was like okay uh, i need to do something so one of my friends told me to read the book the secret and so i watched the documentary on youtube okay. which, <laughs> there's no reason the book yeah anymore. which the documentary on Saves youtube so much time yeah, yeah it's it's so it's so shitty and put together so terribly that it looks like they edited it on like iMovie. Like I swear there's like star fade transitions, you know, like, like it's just so bad. This whole show's edited on iMovie, which is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. This is great. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. But it, like it was, so it was like, um, uh, like I was already watching something that was, was kind of sketchy, but I was like, all right, I believe in this. And they're like, you just have to believe you have to believe in the power of positive thought that you put things out in the universe and they come true. And I was like, I believe. And then in the middle of it, they're like, you need to pause this program and wish for something unreasonable because the universe has unlimited gifts for you. Like you be greedy is what they said. So I was like, all right, well, you know, um, I'm a big fan of Nate Bargatze and I know that yes, uh, fantastic. Yeah, he's yeah. phenomenal. And, uh, uh, I, um, uh, so I was like, I know that Jimmy Fallon came in and saw Nate Bargatze performing at the stand, changed his life. I had him on the Tonight Show. Now everything's happened for Nate. I was like, maybe that could happen for me. So I was like, uh, I know that Jimmy Fallon lives right by the stand in New York, so maybe he could come to the stand and he could see me and invite me on the Tonight Show. And I was like, I want to kill. And then just so I can be unreasonable, I want to get a standing ovation. So uh, so I, uh, I wished for that. And then it was crazy, like three days later, I'm standing at the bar at the stand drinking whiskey and uh, the manager of the club walks by and then uh, my manager walks by and they all look at me like, you don't know who's behind me. And the next guy was like, hey, Pete, uh, it's Jimmy. I live right across the street. And uh, uh, Dave told me to it's come see you. And, um, it's a great impression. I yeah. Love it. All you have to do to do a, an impression of Jimmy <laughs> Fallon is you just have to be slightly out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, oh, hey, hey, man. Hey, oh, man. Hey. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's funny. And, um, uh, but yeah, so, um, so then boom, I get invited on the show and, oh, there's, oh, there's drunk people. Uh, they're drunk from all their smoothie king. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> um, but so Jimmy Fallon invited me on the show personally, which I'd been turned down to go on the show a million times. Uh, I had sent in a million tapes and by the way, the booker now wasn't the person that turned me down. It was like the, they went through like a series of bookers before they got to the current one. So. I'm in no way shitting on the Booker now. He's amazing. He's not up there with Wisconsin Madison. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. yeah. Oh, this this Booker is great. He's one of my great friends. I, I love him. The previous Bookers, you know, they can kiss my ass. But uh, <laughs> yeah, fuck those guys. Yeah, they, all of them can kiss my ass. But um, uh, anyway, um, so I, I didn't get to go on the Tonight Show until Jimmy invited me personally. So then I remember I was so nervous. I'm riding up the elevators at 30 Rock. And I was like, my heart's just pumping. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm going to have a freak out on the Tonight Show. Like, I, my anxiety was like boiling through the roof. And then Jimmy, they had this thing called Pub Quiz where they had all these golden retrievers. And uh, they'd kind of like spilled out of their room. And like each puppy through like SAG after has to have like their own handler. So imagine like 30 puppies with like 30 handlers trying to get them mm-hmm. like a Disney movie. And, um, and Jimmy's kind of running after one and he picks one up. Like I see the doors open. He picks one up. He's like, Hey Pete, you want to hold a puppy? And I was like, <laughs> how can I be nervous if Jimmy Fallon just greeted me at the ele- <laughs> elevator bank with a golden retriever puppy? <laughs> I was like, this is great. And then he talked to me for like a good half an hour. Like he really makes you feel comfortable. Like He's a cool dude, super cool guy, which, which is weird because you know, like when you, it's not weird that he was cool. It's weird to do stand up on a show like that because 
like on no other stand up stage do you go up on stage and you're sharing a stage with other people. Like it's a weird energy thing when when you're like, I command your energy. Yeah. But there's people that are way more famous than you on stage. There's the roots and there's Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. yeah. And they're just they're sitting there. So the fact that he like he does he really does a good service to you. Because he comes up to you and he's like, all right, I'm your friend. So you're going to have one of your friends on stage with you. Like, it's not going to be like Jimmy Fallon. It's like, oh, I'm a cool guy. And yeah. you can feel comfortable with me. And like, that's wild. So I remember that's, I, that's it was kind of cool. Actually. It was pretty cool. I remember the one <clears throat> the when I did Letterman, I went out on stage and uh, like I almost my opening line on Letterman was almost holy shit, that's David Letterman. <laughs> 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 I was so close to just being like, holy fuck, I'm one of you right now. <laughs> like, I can't believe that I get to be up there. Hey, yeah. Paul Schaefer, holy shit. Like, that's like, awesome. Like, I almost just broke, you know, but you got to do your, your thing. But anyway, so I'm like waiting to go on and all of a sudden the nerves are coming back and uh, and Jimmy's about to, uh, he's about to introduce me and he's like, hold on. He's like, I just feel like the vibe's not right with the crowd. And he's like, he's like, you know what I'm going to do? He goes, I'm going to rewarm you guys up. And uh, and the warm-up guy, oh, good. Uh, yeah. is, is that a party bus that <laughs> yeah. just pulled up? <laughs> yeah. Is that is that a wedding? It's, probably. <laughs> it's probably a wedding party bus. I hear country music, so I assume so. Yeah. It's a, um, great, it's a great time. There's a good chance. Bring, bring your own beer. Bring your own beer. <laughs> that's so funny. They were saying bring your own beer. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a wedding bus. Hey, only in Des Moines, Iowa do you hear that. Dude, the weirdest part, by the way, I'm interjecting to my own story, but... The weirdest part is that uh, a lot of people do weddings over at that Hilton Garden in here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, so whenever I work out here on Saturdays, I, after this, I'm going to go do a workout. They, like, come and they stage the wedding party in the workout thing. So I'll be, like, doing a hit workout and doing, like, burpees and shit. <laughs> and then there's, like, bridesmaids <laughs> and groomsmen that are hammered. And they're like, hey, buddy, one, two. They're, like, counting for me. <laughs> and it's like, like, shuck, I lost count. What was that now? Yeah, I'm like, Jesus, this is weird. Um, but So I bet, they're, uh, I bet they were just coming from there. So I, I think I missed my you wedding actually, today. You yeah. timed it perfectly then. Yeah. Well, um, they, they, they knew you were going to be somewhere. They were like, wherever Pete's at, we're going there. We're going to go we there. We are going where Pete is. We will interrupt him <laughs> today. So anyway, back to the Jimmy Fallon story. So. Uh, he was like, hey, yeah, this crowd's not, uh, this crowd, the energy's kind of dying. So he's like, I'm going to go warm you back up. I'm going to go do stand up. And I'm backstage, like, I'm like, I, I turn to the guy that, there's a guy who it's his job to just open up a curtain like like four times a show. It's a union job. There's like, like tasks in the union are very specific. So there's a guy in the universe that, like, he, like, could you imagine telling somebody in Ethiopia that there's a job that pays really well where there's a guy that opens up a curtain? <laughs> how do you how do you apply for that job? What, what was your skill set? Open, close. Hey. Open, open, close. This guy's awesome too. He's got a sick ponytail. Like he, <laughs> he's got he's got a, such a rad ponytail. Um he just he just looks like like have you ever just seen a guy that's like so masculine that you're like, "Oh yeah, he gets it in." You know, like <laughs> like that guy walks into a bar and every woman is He's very like, polite, but he smashes. Yeah. Oh yeah. He opens up a lot of curtains <laughs> and uh, like Loren- <laughs> <laughs> he opens up a lot of curtains. Yeah. <laughs> he opens up a lot of curtains. Lorenzo Lamas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's my friend. Is he actually? Really? Yeah, he came to one of my shows in Irvine and uh, uh, he come, he came up to me and he's like he's like, "Hey, Lorenzo, how you doing?" I'm just talking to him. And like I'm a straight guy, and we're just talking at the merch table, and he's got this beautiful, uh, I think, fiance. And um, anyway, the more and more I talk to him, I go, "Hey, I don't know if you uh, mind me saying this." I was like, "You are super handsome, man! <laughs> like, like it's cr- yeah. it's like ridiculous." I was like, "I was like, watch him in Renegade." I remember yeah. when he played so uh, Hercules. Yeah, yeah. I, I go, I go. You're like, I go. It's it's hilarious how ridiculous or how handsome you are. And his girlfriend goes, well, you don't know what Lorenzo he is. And I go, I just looked at him. I was like, holy fuck, you're Lorenzo Lamas. And uh, we, we instant <laughs> message each other on Instagram. Like, we, I can show you messages that uh, Lorenzo. Hey, uh, I, when I was growing up, I used to watch his show <clears throat> all the time. I, thought, I, remember, I was like, that's, <clears throat> I'd watch that in Highlander because they'll be on back-to-back on USA Network. I was uh, like, these guys are so badass. Oh, it used to be... Uh, Hercules and then Xena Warrior Princess and yeah. she w- I had the biggest crush on her. Yeah, Lorenzo Lamas. We we like awesome. he's my friend and uh yeah, this is this is what he looks like now. Um so uh he was wearing a shirt that said he's Renegade. Like, so he's he, so old but he's still really good yeah, looking. He kinda looks like the ultimate warrior. Yeah, he's like a silver yeah. fox and he's got he has got a it smoking looks a hot like a gal. Yeah. yeah. Um but yeah, he uh 
like super cool guy. Big fan of comedy. Uh, love that guy. Uh, That's really great. awesome. That is awesome. Um, uh, you ever meet those people and you're like, I'm jealous of their life. Like, yeah, he gets to walk not around. Not you, not you, Lorenzo. Yeah, <laughs> he gets to walk around all day being Lorenzo Lamas. <laughs> yeah, right. Which, yeah. what a cool name that is too, Lorenzo Lamas. <laughs> I I told him a story because uh, now I'm I'm telling a story in the middle of a story. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so in Spanish class, uh, I had like one of those big Spanish classes at the University of Minnesota. You know, where it's like 500 people or mm-hmm. not 500 people, probably like 200 people. And so we had this sign-in sheet, and uh, you know, so I'd always write like Pete Lee, and then just below mine, I would write Lorenzo Lamas. And so our teacher, um, she would be like, uh, like it was a couple days in. She's like, I am concerned because I had this teacher named Emil C. Lopez. And she was like, <laughs> I am concerned because um, it shows that Lorenzo Lamas uh, has been here for a lot of classes, but he did not take the quiz or the test. Does anyone know where Lorenzo Lamas is? <laughs> <laughs> and all of us are just like cracking up because they know that I do this. And, uh, and then like I signed him in that he was there. And she's like, Lorenzo Lamas. <clears throat> If you're here, I need you to take the test. <laughs> and uh, and so I told him that story. It was kind of funny to get to tell Lorenzo Lamas. <laughs> That's funny that, that you did that and you actually met the actual I'm sure he Lamas. found it hilarious, too. Oh, he, he, I think he liked it. Yeah. yeah. I, I think wait, it, wait. You, so you actually dropped his GPA in college. <laughs> yeah, I really did. I really did. He could have graduated from the University of Minnesota. <laughs> he, um, well, he would have graduated from Wisconsin. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, he's good enough to get in there. He's <laughs> yeah. Lorenzo. He could have just been like, application. I'm Lorenzo Lamas. Um but uh anyway uh, oh so jimmy fallon story so there's the guy that opens up the curtain and uh jimmy's doing stand-up and uh and i say to the guy that opens up the curtain i was like what is happening right now and he goes i don't know he's never done this he's never just like decided to warm up the crowd mid thing then at the end of the thing he gives this speech to the crowd uh, about how like like he he normally doesn't go to comedy clubs to scout, scout talent, but he's like taking a personal interest in in getting better and more stand up comedians on the show, and uh, and like he found me and he really likes my comedy and he sees a future in me. And he's like I consider him a friend, so will you guys treat him like he's my friend? I'm like backstage like oh, I'm getting a little choked up. <laughs> yeah, I was like yeah. pressure's on. Yeah, like like you know the the um, the hot girl. Uh, I don't want to cry mascara wipe. You yeah, know, like, yeah. ah, that, like I was kind of doing that. And um, so then he brings me out and the crowd's just all hyped up. They're like, the, his crowd is like Muppets. They're like, you're Jimmy's friend. You're our friend. <laughs> and so like my first joke killed and I don't even, I don't even know if my first joke was that good and it already killed. So I was like, this is going to be a good set. And by the time I got to the end, I was like, wow, man, they haven't even seen the closer. Like this is really going to drive it home. And then I remember, like they, I, I was like, "Thank you, I'm Pete Lee," and the crowd stood up. I was like, "Holy shit, I'm getting, a t- I'm getting a standing ovation." But I thought that a standing ovation was just something that they did, you know, like, yeah. like, like there was a sign above me that said, "Like stand up" or like applause. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, so I was like, I was like, "Wow, all right, so that's pretty cool." And uh, Jimmy comes up to me, and he's like, and he was like, "Dude, you're getting, a t- you're gonna stand out, standing out right now on the Tonight Show." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, that's cool." And he's like, "No," he's like. He's like, you're numb right now. He's like, you're you're not even realizing what a big deal. He's like, this is the first one that's happened. I was like, holy shit, and um, uh, and then like it started to hit me like that it was a big moment. And I was like, ah, and I'm mic'd up, he's mic'd up, and he keeps saying like, you're gonna standing ovation. I was like, I'm gonna cry, Jimmy. I was like, I'm gonna cry, <laughs> I'm gonna cry Jimmy. And he's he's like, I don't care, cry, man, cry. And the audience is like, cry. And uh, <laughs> and uh, like I kind of started tearing up, and I was like, oh no, this is the freak out I was worried about. Yeah. And then um and then he you know he threw it to commercial ran up the steps and um and i and then the next thing i knew i was out in the hallway and uh supermodel giselle bunchen tom brady's, tom brady's wife tom brady's, tom brady's yeah. wife um she's running towards me because she went up and watched the set with my friends in the balcony and she like ran down the steps and she's running towards me and i was like i guess i run towards her <laughs> like <laughs> slow motion yeah i kind of looked behind me like is there anybody else she's running towards and then i ran she chasing me then i ran towards her we grabbed hands like a couple of sorority girls and we started jumping up and down and she's like yay and i was like yay and i was like what moment is this and she's like, you did it. That was great. She's like, that was so funny. And I was like, you were funny. Like, we're colleagues. <laughs> and uh, you get it. And um, and then we sat there and we or we stood there and we talked for like three minutes just about like, you know, our success that night and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and then Jimmy came into the green room 
and then uh, the roots came into the green room. Like not all of them because it's a small green room and there's a lot of roots. And um, <laughs> uh, but Questlove was like, man, I really loved your set. And then right after that, this page from NBC came in with a book, she, and she goes, you got to sign this guest book. Like you know, just write something to Jimmy. And then Questlove's drumsticks were in there, so I was like, wow, Questlove liked me so much that he gave me his drumsticks. I was like, holy shit. So I took the drumsticks. I put them in my gift bag. I was like, what a fucking day. A couple weeks later, I get a message from Mike Vecchione, who's doing The Tonight Show. And he's like, hey, man, uh, do we sign the guest books and the drumsticks? They're like, what do we do? And I was like, uh, Questlove gave you his drumsticks? He gave me the drumsticks. I, I like put them in one of those frames from Marshalls with my yeah. cue card and the drumsticks. And I'm like, stand, I'm like sitting there looking at my thing that I've already hung on the wall with the drumsticks. And he's like, no, man, I think you're supposed to sign them. I get a message from the book of The Tonight Show. You fucking took the drumsticks? Questlove's had drumsticks signed by everybody on the show. And except like, you. Except for you. And <laughs> But they're like each show. So like they were supposed to go to me, uh, then Paul Giamatti, then Giselle Bunchen. So all three of us <clears> were supposed to sign the drumsticks. And I was like, well, fuck. I guess I'm going to have to break this glass. And he's like, no, never mind. He's like, we're going to get drumsticks. We're going to like pound on them to make them look like they're used. And then we're going to send them to Paul Giamatti and Giselle via FedEx. And then they're going to get FedEx to you. You're going to sign them. And then they're going to go back to Questlove and you won't know any different. I was like, all right, I feel really weird lying to Questlove <laughs> like this. So, um, so I get the uh, drumsticks, we FedEx them. They, uh, you know, Questlove doesn't know any different. So I'm at this party that Dave Chappelle uh, throws called the Comedians Ball in New York City. Yeah. And I'm so high. I'm like super high. And um, next thing I know, Questlove is next to me. And um, his real name's Amir. And he insisted. He, and so I was like, hey, Amir. And um, I was like, do you want any of this joint? And he's like, no. I'm, he's like, I'm good right now. And I was like, I stole your drumsticks. <laughs> 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 and he's like, what? And then I told him the whole story about how I stole the drumsticks. And I have a picture in my phone of the, the drumsticks that are on my wall. And he's like, oh, man, he's like, I would have been cool with that. He's like, I'm glad that you have the drumsticks. And I was like, oh, I was so worried. But I was like, so yeah. I was like, you know, I can't lie to you, Amir. It's like I teabagged your drum set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I stole your drumsticks. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. OP, I've got one final question for you. I want to say thank you very much for being on our podcast. Yeah, very much great, appreciate it. Thank you so you much. Oh, this is fantastic. great. I will be at your show tonight. So if you need somebody to oh, open yeah. for you, I don't have time. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> He can be the asshole from Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He will certainly leave you at Tonic. But next time you're in town, I will. I would love to do. That. That'd be fantastic. Hell yeah! I'm not prepared Let's do it tonight, but yeah, I'd love to. Let's do but, it. Uh, Get ready. Train for it. I, Train well, for next time in Des Moines. That's the next. That's the next step. Is I gotta get a good. I need a good eight minutes that I can break down to a good five minutes. You know what I mean? That you gotta but, boil it down. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta boil it down. Um, my final question for you though, um, top five best comedians. Top five favorite comedians of all time. Um. I love Dave Chappelle. I think he's my top one. Um, I know that there's a lot of people mad at him right now, um, but uh, I haven't even watched it, and I am so excited to watch it. I'm watching it tomorrow, but yeah, I haven't watched his latest mm. special either. But um, I, I just I, I just want to say, um, you know, there's like a lot of people have gone, hey, there's a lot of uh, every I've heard people say this. Uh, everyone in the trans community hates Dave Chappelle. Well. Um, I don't know how many people have friends in that community, but I have friends in that community. Mm -hmm. And um, I know several people who love Dave Chappelle that are in that community. Yeah. So I think it's kind of unfair to generalize in that way if we're talking about not right. generalizing. Um, I think there are, there's just so many people in that community that are really cool. And, uh, and like, it's, it's a percentage of that community that feels offended, not all of them. So I want to, I like, stick up for Dave and that community at the same time if I can. Um, but... Uh, um, uh, so I love Dave Chappelle. Um, uh, I love Gary Shandling, even though, you know, he's, he's gone, but uh, I loved his comedy. Yeah. Uh, was it the Larry Sanders show? Is that what he did? Larry Sanders show. Yeah. Lo loved it. Uh, I'm a big fan of Bob Newhart. Uh, I like kind of studied him to figure out how I could, you know, be funny as myself. I can see the comparison myself. there. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. A little bit of Bob Newhart. I remember the Bob Newhart show going up. I can see the mm. comparison there. Okay. Um, love Eddie Murphy. Don't know how he's going to make his comeback. A lot of pressure. He got paid a lot of money from Netflix, and now after a pandemic, he's got to come back and do this. Like, if I was Eddie Murphy, here's what I'd do. I would write material, and I'd have other people <clears> go out and workshop it because you know the second he steps on stage, if he's if he's dog shit at comedy, the whole media and social mm -hmm. media is going to be talking about it. Yeah. Uh, so, like, Eddie Murphy's got to step up. So I would have him, like, 
I would have I would write stuff because he's one of the funniest people alive. I would write stuff and then have people like me go out. I'll I'll do your material for you for a couple months, Eddie Murphy. Do you write your own material? I do. I write all my own material. Okay. Every once in a while, I get a, a tag or a line from a friend, but um, yeah, I write I write my own material. I also I'll help friends out with their stuff too. You know, like if if I have a friend that's doing a special and they're like, I really want to do this bit, but I haven't finished it. Uh, you know, I, I um, trying to think of who else. Um, those are my top ones. Um, I uh, one of my best friends is Nikki Glazer. I think she's in my top. Just, I, we just saw we her, just saw her last yeah. week. Yeah, yeah she was here last Thursday. I yeah. love her. I think um, I love her too. I, I, th- I think she gets a reasons. lot of credit because <laughs> 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 she's uh, she's good looking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's funny, but she's very yeah. good looking too. Oh yeah, yeah. She's a good looking. She's a, she's a looker. That gal. I love um, her uh, like insult or like roast stuff. That's, she's that's, been great on the roast. Yeah. It was my favorite favorite Nikki Glaser stuff, but yeah, she's. I, I it's weird, you know. Like I don't want to call her underrated because I think a lot of people uh, like really know how great and funny she is. But like, I've worked with her a lot and worked with her a lot in person, and like, she is a powerhouse of comedy. And she like, it, like if if you do a podcast with her or like back when I do her radio show, I was like, how are you this funny this fast? So like, I I would definitely put her in my top. I was people. So I was. She's one of my best friends. Knew she was coming. My my uh, my buddy had tried to email. He's like, just DM her, just DM her. So I sent her just all kinds of DMs. Like, yeah. hey, <laughs> be on our podcast. <laughs> so oh, did she, she heart shape him? She heart. Oh, that's good. I said, can't wait to see your show. There's a chart of that one. Fantastic show. <laughs> she heard that one. Other mm-hmm. than that, yeah. She didn't really respond, but yeah, she well, she put you on her security team's name. <laughs> yeah, so. she was staring at me. So we we made eye contact two or three times. You made eye yeah, contact. Totally. When the lights low in the crowd, she mm-hmm. looked to the left side of the room and said, "Yeah." <laughs> That guy. So, I, don't mm-hmm. know, I don't know. Yeah, she's great. So, she, yeah, if you talk to her, tell her to come on the podcast. <laughs> All right, I'll tell her to come on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, fly back to Des Moines. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so, Chappelle. Uh, what did I say? Jerry Shandling. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Shandling, Shandling, Bob, Bob Newhart, Newhart, Nikki Glazer. Nikki Glazer, and then I need one more. Oh, you said uh, Eddie Murphy. Oh, Eddie, uh, Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy, yeah. yeah. Okay. Eddie Murphy. Marshall, what's your top five? Uh, so, yeah, I love Dave Chappelle. Okay. also love Eddie Murphy. Okay. Uh, I'm a big Jezelnik fan. Oh, I love yeah, him. Love yeah. Jezelnik. Really nice guy, too. Yeah. Is he really? Yeah, really nice guy. Uh, that would, yeah. I don't know if people still know him as much as they should, but Dave Attell. Oh, Dave Attell's, uh, yeah. I can't believe I didn't say him as one of my top people. He's, I, used, I used to watch uh, Up All Night or wherever it was on Comedy Central. Yeah, and Insomnia. So, Insomnia. Insomnia, yeah. yeah, that's what it was. We've yeah. been trying to go to their bumping mics for like three years now. Yeah, yeah it keeps getting postponed. And uh, One more. Uh, See, I was a big, uh, I was a big Bernie Mac fan. Okay. So, probably, I'd probably put Bernie Mac up there. Okay. Got it. It's it, kind of, it's kind of a random hodgepodge of comedians there, but yeah, Bernie Mac's. But uh, I loved him in the Kings of Comedy so much. Oh his his, yeah. his whole 20, 30 minutes he did in Kings of Comedy was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Have you ever seen his Def Jam where, because it was like so scary to go on Def Jam, and then he went out in his opening line, and he goes, he goes, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. <laughs> Mother <laughs> not fuckers. seen that. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> and then the whole time he tagged it with his, he would just have a joke that crushed, and he'd go, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. <laughs> it was so great. That's awesome. It was Cody. so, I would say uh, my, my favorite comedian of all time, Chris Titus. Okay. Oh, uh, he's phenomenal. Love yeah. him. Uh, well, I actually went to his last show. It was here at the Funny Bone. Um, I love Brian Regan. Like his new stuff isn't my favorite. His old stuff was so funny. I've All seen right. a couple couple new things he's done. I'm like, it's funny, but it's not great. It's not. Oh, well, I don't say it's not great. It's not as good as the other stuff. I thought like his. Yeah, like his bit about log trucks is what, like I I think about that on probably like a daily or weekly basis. Like yeah. how like like he he's got this whole bit about how like he sees two log trucks on the highway that are passing each other, and he's like, they could have saved a hell of a lot of trouble, like if they were <laughs> yeah. just like. Oh, you got logs over there? <laughs> I don't need to have logs uh, his, sent to me. His <laughs> bit about stupid in school mm-hmm. and uh, the UPS person who tried to mail a box. Yeah. Those those two bits are my favorite bits of his, and they're absolutely hilarious. Uh, yeah. Dave, Dave Chappelle, mm-hmm. for sure. Love Dave Chappelle. Um, man, I, I, I've heard the Robin Williams stole stuff, but I don't know for sure. But I got to say Robin Williams. I love Robin Williams. Oh, yeah. And my fifth one got to be Jeselnik. I love Je- I love that the roast, the insult kind of. I got to make one correction. Bernie Mac had to be six. I left Bill Burr out. Oh, Bill Burr is amazing. I love Bill Burr. Yeah, Bill I mean, but, but what I meant what I meant to say was 
Pete Lee, number one. Yeah. Pete Lee, number two. <laughs> the guy All from Pete Cleveland, Lee. number three. Yeah. yeah. Love that guy. Love how he did Pete Lee. Um, yeah, Jeselnik is phenomenal. Um, definitely agree about Bill Burr. Um, he's, he's really great. And, um, yeah, uh, Dave Attell, I think. I think Dave Attell, he might be the greatest working comic like of all time like he's so i I can't can't believe i left him off you know have you ever heard about like party schools like like here's the list of party schools asterisk arizona state always wins so they're not even on the list like i think i think david tell is that on the list of comedians he's the asterisk because he's just so great like his stand-up special where he did the one about uh he there's a what was it uh the guy with one tooth biting an apple. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 The homeless guy with one tooth. Like the whole comedy special was fucking. Hilarious. Well, the roast. What, what was the the roast? It was a roast battle. It was uh, bumping mics. Bumping mics with him and with Jeff. Jeff, Jeff Ross, Ross is known as the guy, type, and Dave Tell. Dave Tell's funny. Made that whole Ross. that whole series. Uh, Jeff Ross yeah. Yeah. Funny. yeah, he uh, that was <laughs> funny. <laughs> I I do this thing with David Tell, and I don't know how I got lucky enough to be this, but um, uh. Like so, Dave when he's on stage at the Comedy Cellar, um, like he likes it when somebody just interacts with him yeah. off stage and asks like like you he'll just kind of ask you questions and you give more of a straight response and then he's gonna come up with nine jokes after that okay. and uh, every once in a while you get to get a, a zinger in or whatever and um, uh, I don't know what I was coming back from the bathroom one night and um, and Dave just like was like oh Pete you know like you were just on stage and i was like yeah i was and i just had to pee and then some i was a little drunk and i just started roasting dave because um <laughs> like, like this, uh, this is gonna end well i can already tell i just started roasting dave and i was like i was like i was like you're like, you dress like a baseball umpire who's also a grave digger and, uh, <laughs> and, like, i just kept going with like roast jokes of him and like um, I can't even believe that I was that disrespectful. I mean, he wanted, he was like roast me and I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, and then the crowd was really loving it. And, um, a guy who's now my agent at CAA was, he's also Dave's agent and he saw me and he's like, dude, he's like, I was like, we got to sign this guy. He was so funny. Like, cause he was just coming back from the bathroom drunk. He's like, if you were that funny off the cuff drunk, he's like, we got to sign you. Yeah. And so David tell was part of the way that I got signed by CAA. But, uh, nice. but That's like, awesome. yeah. so do you, you don't do a lot of, a lot like, a lot of crowd interaction kind of thing. Oh, I do. I do a lot of it, um, especially now because I, I I dumped all that material into my special, and then mm. it's like I have a new hour, but I don't want to put it out on Instagram. Okay. So I'm like saving this material because I want to do it in a special. So every week I always um, I record from the back of the room, and I do a lot of crowd interaction because like I'm not afraid to put that stuff on Instagram right. okay. because I'm not burning anything by putting it out there. And um, one of my favorite things to do is to improvise with the crowd. Like I, I'm a trained improviser. I studied at the UCB for all their courses on improv and sketch. Okay. And uh, I loved I love to riff with the crowd. And um, lately, that's been like all my Instagram content is just me interacting mm-hmm. with the crowd. Something weird happens, and then I throw it up there. I'm hoping some weird shit happens tonight. Well, don't burn moment. me too much up tonight. Yeah, Cody, oh, no. there. He'll yell I'll be there. You. Oh, I won't burn you. I like. I'm always nice to people. It's just if something weird happens. Like I was at the Irvine Improv, and this lady was getting kicked out, and I don't even know what the context was. But all of a sudden, she starts yelling at me, uh, "Small dicks can't buy you nothing." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "What?" And so I asked her again, just to clarify what she was saying. And like, she's like, "Small dicks can't buy you nothing." And I wound up doing f- about five minutes just on the phrase "small dicks can't buy you nothing." Like I broke it down. I was like. Well, you'd think that small dicks would buy you everything because yeah. <laughs> big dicks wouldn't buy you shit because they're like, I got a big dick and I'm already giving it to you. Yeah. That's gift alone. <laughs> That's fair. But, um, but That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I'm anyway. looking forward. I'm looking forward to the show tonight. So. I'm looking forward to it, too. All right. I got to get back and I got to hit. I got to hit this elliptical machine. You got to. You got to. Well, yeah. yeah. You well, got to go masturbate, too, since your girlfriend's not in town. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I can't. Breaking I, the streak. I, I can't break the streak. I, I'm, I'm on a really good streak. She's going to on the ceiling when you, when you see her again. Dude, I, I see her tomorrow morning. I, I get into Phoenix at 7, and um, she's got a condo in Scottsdale, so we're going to stay there for the day, and then we're driving with the dog back up to L.A. And um, so she was like, you can hold out. I, I'm like, I can hold out for two days. But so it might be a real pent up show at the funny bone tonight. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, Fair. last thing, gonna ask the eight ball question. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, oh, I got, it's gotta be a good question. <laughs> it's pressure's on. It, it could be mediocre. Okay. Um, all right. Magic eight ball. Uh, will I get a Netflix special? 
ask again later. <laughs> <laughs> so well, that just means you got to come, come back on, on again. I got to come back on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll ask you again later. <laughs> All right, Pete, thanks for coming on, man. We appreciate it. Thank uh, you, Tonic. It's been a great time. Lolo's, Thank you, Tonic. Bebops, check out the new menu item coming from Bebops soon. Yep, and uh, appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time.